2021 was a big year for Chinese leader Xi Jinping. At the Communist Party's annual meeting this fall, he was symbolically elevated to the same status as the People's Republic of China's paramount leader, Mao Zedong, by a rare resolution backed by party members. The document laid out Xi's understanding of China's past and his vision for China's future. President Xi Jinping hasn't left China for nearly two years, partly because of the pandemic, but also because he's focused on building his legacy. In July, ahead of the party's Central Committee meeting, he made it clear that he's firmly in the driver's seat at home and abroad. The Chinese people will never allow any foreign forces to bully, oppress or enslave us. Anyone who dares try to do that will have their heads bashed and bloodied against the Great Wall of Steel, forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party. Its official history is the top item on the agenda. Chairman Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, was the first to enshrine his role as leader. His successor, Deng Xiaoping, architect of the reforms that propelled China's economy to the world's second biggest, did the same. Xi wants to show that he's an equally important leader, transforming China into a global power. He wants to make his power felt all across Chinese society as well. He has boosted the military and launched a crackdown that has muzzled the tech tycoons like Alibaba's Jack Ma. In recent weeks, Xi has been stepping up pressure on the sovereign island of Taiwan, which China considers its own. But one challenge he has yet to overcome is economic headwinds. Growth is slowing amid an energy crunch and supply chain disruptions. And there are still concerns about China's real estate market. Xi's image has become so elevated and so sensitive that the Communist Party has sought to curb all of their alternatives beyond its officially crafted version of who Xi Jinping is even to go so far as to force the cancellation of a book talk this October about Xi in Germany. The author of that book, Adrian Geiges, told us then why he thinks China is doing all this. What I'm feeling is, and what they even told us, it's because, you know, there's such a cult of personality around Xi Jinping uh, now in China, and even to portray him as a human being <laughs> is uh, too much. I mean, even to write uh, simple facts, uh, he was divorced or something like this, we don't care about it. We only mentioned it in a sentence in the book. Uh, even this is too much because they will uh, show him in China as something like like a superstar or even like, like a god. Uh, and what she says goes. His government has pushed a number of reforms aimed to erode individualism and push for more devotion of the self to the state. That's shown up in the way China has dealt with the pandemic, ordering entire cities to get tested, vaccinated, or go into lockdown. It's extended to the bedroom. With China's birth rate dropping, parents are being encouraged to have more children. Video gaming for teenagers now has a time limit. And there's been a clampdown on high-profile Chinese citizens. Anyone who comes across as defiant of the state has been dealt with harshly, as the world saw this fall with tennis champion Peng Shuai. To those living in China, Peng Shuai is alive and well. But videos like this one released in November didn't convince the WTA. Due to its continued concerns about Peng's well-being, it withdrew all its tournaments from China. Its CEO saying in a statement, In good conscience, I don't see how I can ask our athletes to compete there when Peng Shuai is not allowed to communicate freely and has seemingly been pressured to contradict her allegation of sexual assault. China, meanwhile, doubled down on its stance, suggesting a vendetta from the West. We have already elaborated our position. We are firmly opposed to acts that politicize sports. The senior politician Peng accused of rape, Zhang Gaoli, hasn't responded to the allegations. But while China tries to block out the issue, the WTA has been pushing for an investigation. The decision to pull out of China was its boldest step. Helped by Peng's success as a player, 
China accounts for hundreds of millions of dollars for the women's tour. With the Beijing Winter Games just ahead, the International Olympic Committee is under pressure to do more. A 30-minute video call it held with Peng didn't assuage concerns. It led to criticism that the IOC was playing into China's hands, with Human Rights Watch calling it a, quote, hostage video in a recent DW interview. The IOC, you know, let's think about it this way. If, if you know, you're asked to participate in making, you know, helping make a hostage video, do you, do you jump in and say yes? No, of course you don't. You try to find ways to actually assist the person, not protect your own reputation, which is all the IOC is doing here. Peng has received support from many current and former tennis players who have praised the WTA's decision. One question now is whether other sports bodies will follow that lead.